was curious, you know, you've got a, a, a number of, of young guys, you know, Christian second year, you got a couple of, of rookies. Um, how, uh, how challenging is that for, for you and for the group in general, you know, trying to get chemistry, uh, you know, and, and a level of expertise and, and a lot of guys that are, you know, pretty new to the, uh, to the NFL and, and playing with one another. I think it's been, it's been fun. The guys have um, come in this off season and done a good job just working hard and doing the things we asked them to do. Sometimes when you have a lot of young guys, you know, they're willing, you know, to do things um, that you ask them to do. You know, they just came in and whatever we asked them this whole off season, they bought in and they've come in every day just trying to make a daily impact and improve on each and every day. And they've done that. And I'm excited about these guys going forward. Uh, Teresa? Uh, Anthony, how are uh, Caleb and, and Elijah, you know, guys who've maybe been dealing with, particularly Caleb, coming off of the surgery, how have they been soaking up what you've been trying to ask them? And, and how tough is it to gauge what they're learning when you can't really put them maybe on the field and go through all the, the physical things you'd like to see? Well, we ask these guys a lot of questions in the meetings. That's one thing Coach um, Vrabel requires of us, you know, to really ask these guys a lot of questions. And We've been filling them up with questions they've been answering and doing everything we've asked them they can possibly do in a meeting setting, um, you know, without being able to go out there and execute right now full speed on the field. But I've been pleased with both of those guys that meet the room with their attention to detail thus far. Uh, ben Arthur. Hey, Anthony. Uh, you know, Kevin Byard is obviously the, the only returning starter to, um, to the secondary. I was wondering – um, just kind of what, what you expect from him, you know, just as, as a leader, um, you know, for the safeties and the, and the cornerbacks and just in, in what ways has he already sort of, you know, stepped up early, you know, just kind of in the off season program. Um, you know, when Kevin came back, that's one thing, you know, I sat down and talked to him about it, even just about exit interview last year, just, you know, taking on a bigger leadership role than he even had this past year. And, um, he's done that, you know, he, he's done some things in the, off season himself, you could talk to him about that, you know, just, you know, just becoming a better leader and ways that he can help us improve and ways that he can, you know, improve himself as a leader. But he's done a good job, you know, especially with a lot of young guys in the room, I'm listening to him. He's the vet in here along with Janoris. So it'd be good. I'm excited um, what um, Kevin's doing, done this far and um, the um, leadership he's brought to the group. Uh, Emily? Yeah, all of a sudden, uh, Amani Hooker is seemingly more of a veteran in this group now. How have you seen him develop as a leader in this offseason? Um, Hook's been good. I mean, Hook, he got a chance to play some valuable snaps for us last year, you know, had some interceptions, some big plays for us. Got a chance to play when Kenny was hurt and also was playing a role in our sub defense. So he's taking that, um, you know, this, this, this role of, you know, potentially competing to be a starter and, and playing alongside Kevin. And he's done a good job in this offseason. I'm excited to see him come back for camp and progress from what he's done um, so far. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Hey, Coach, I'm going to follow up a little bit on Caleb, uh, on Caleb and Elijah. What's it been like for them, I mean, to, to have to kind of be held back a little bit to get their bodies right and how they handle in that part of it? Chomp is a bit wanting to show what they can do, but also knowing they've, they've got to be patient. Um, it's been good. Those guys, you know, we meet a, you know, we have these rookies in here. We got them a lot, and um, they probably get tired of seeing us. But we meet with those guys, and they they know that they just got to follow the plan that Todd and those guys have set for um for them. And you know, because we have the best interest in heart, we're just trying to get them healthy. So when we're when we're able to put them out on the field, they can go full go. But they just know, you know, this, you know, one thing sitting in the meeting room and getting those um, you know, answering questions. But we we give them a lot of visuals, to, you know walkthroughs and make sure they're doing things they need to do and seeing the picture changes in as much as a um, real setting as possible. So we try to change it up for those guys so they're not just sitting in a meet room and sitting in front of a film with a lot of walkthroughs and some of the things we do as far as from a meeting standpoint. And, and I guess as far as Jack Rabbit goes, what, what's kind of communication been like with him and, and how confident are you that he can kind of hit the ground running uh, when he's here? Um, the communication has been great. Um, you know, he's been every every time I talk to him, he's been good. You know, talk to him today, the conversations have been good. You know, he'll pick up this, he'll pick him up, pick up the system, and with no problem. I'm excited about him and what um, he's going to bring to our um, unit. Uh, David Butler. 
Anthony, was, was Kevin Johnson's decision to retire a surprise to you, or did you know he was considering it? And, and what did this defense lose when he made that choice? Uh, um, you know, I've known Kevin a long time. He's been through some things, you know, even dating back to my time with him in um, Houston. And yes, it was a shock, but um, he called me and talked to me and gave me his, I won't get into his reasons. We can talk to him, but just, you know, I'm just happy that, you know, he made a decision that he made for him that he's at peace with. And, you know, Kevin has been a great pro. He was going to bring some versatility. A guy can play inside and outside. A good, great guy to have in the meet room. So I've been blessed, you know, because I've been around Kevin and know the type of person he is. And, um, you know, I'm just, you know, excited for him in this next um, chapter he's taken in his life. And um, I, I appreciate the pro he was from the time I did coach him. Uh, Emily? I know throughout the season, Kevin Byard kept talking about the communication and, and the lack thereof. And that was something that they were putting an emphasis on to try to fix during the season. Are you seeing that come out more in the off season and, and putting that emphasis on making sure that we communicate better uh, this upcoming season? I'm a half and um, everybody's taking, um, you know, pride in just getting that accomplished and making sure we're all on the same page when we go out there so we can execute at a high level. And that's what it's going to take every day all 11 guys, just not just the back end, everybody, the back end communicating to the linebackers, linebackers communicating with the back end and relaying that all the way down to the front. So that's been a big, um, you know, focus for the unit this off season. And um, the guys are taking tremendous strides and getting that accomplished um, so far in the OTAs. Uh, Teron? Yeah, getting back to uh, uh... Elijah Molden, uh, Coach Anthony, when you look at, can you kind of speak to his his football IQ? Because there's something in talking to Jimmy Lake. And uh, he, he was really high on, on that. And it's something that Elijah apparently is known for. And I can, you know, we can see that. We saw that in the pre-draft um, interviews with him, that he was a guy that understood um, football, high IQ guy, you know, just talking to him. You know, it's just going to be one thing, just getting out there and repping it and doing it and feeling comfortable, you know, getting that done. But as far as learning, like learning, it just comes easy. It's just natural for him. He has a, you know, high football IQ. And I, I know Cluiston is, is very close to Pahokee, so I'm sure you're very familiar with the dog that uh, Jack Rabbit has in him. How much can he help influx that mentality into this young secondary? You know, just talking to him, I can just see it and feel it. And, you know, he's going to be a leader on the field, and he just has that mentality that you want as a DB. I know, you know, he's 10 minutes from my hometown, so I, I know what that's about, the way, you know, guy comes up, just had to work and scratch and claw, earn everything he's, you know, gotten in his life and just still has that mentality. And I was talking to him this morning. I just love it. I think it's going to bring a lot to our group and um, hopefully, you know, we can mentor some of these younger guys and we can feed off on them as well. Uh, Jim Wyatt. And a couple from me, Anthony, I, I, I guess as far as Farley goes, you being a Virginia Tech guy yourself, I mean, did you watch him even closer than you did a lot of other corners over the last couple of years and, and have maybe even more insight on him than, than normal? Well, yes, because, you know, I follow Virginia Tech, so I knew about Caleb, you know, off, you know, but since he first got there, I'm not telling who he was and the type of player he was and how highly, you know, guys around the program um, spoke of him. So I watched his development and how much he improved, you know, from this time of making the transition from being a receiver to being a defensive back. And we're looking to um, continue that improvement. But I'm excited about what he's going to bring to this unit. But I have followed him and, you know, know what he brings to the table. And, and so much of a, of a group's improvement maybe t takes place in camp. Your guys going to be working against, you know, Julio Jones and A.J. Brown and, and Josh Reynolds, I mean, how, how, and, and the rest of the crew. I mean, how, how much better is that going to make your guys by going up against these receivers in practice every day? It's going to make us, you know, really good. I mean, you think about we're facing two number one receivers every day, no matter what side we're going to line up against us. And then we throw a guy like Fruit in there at the tight end position. You know, that's a very talented – and Josh, you know, that's a very, very talented group. And, you know, we're fortunate to be able to go against those guys every single day because most – when you get the Sundays, you know, you're not going to face the better guys that we're facing in practice. Two elite receivers that's done it at, a, you know, A.J. 
done it from the time, you know, the short time he's been in the league and just, you know, my time being in the NFL, Julio has done it for a long time. So, you know, we're in a good position to be able to, you know, go up against those guys um, every day in practice and see how we match up with them.